Well, good morning, Ipsy Free. We are so glad you're with us in person and gathering in online. My name is Crystal, and this is my dear friend, Leslie. And we're so glad that you've joined this hour to learn more about our mission of loving God, loving all people, and following Jesus together. Please take a moment and grab the Connect card that was either handed to you on the way in or uh, online at ipsyfree.org connect. Fill this out, and you can either drop it in our boxes in the back or online again. Um, but this is our way to connect and hear back from you, feedback about your prayers, your praises, things that are just weighing on your heart. Or if you choose to follow God, we'd love to know that as well. Thank you so much. All right, we have some really fun things coming up as a church family. Uh, coming up soon is our all church camp out ooh, ooh, ooh. from June 21st to 24th. Ooh, I heard a woohoo. Yes, we're going to be doing that there. Uh, the fabulous Lindsey Graham is in our area in the back. She will sign you up today. Come on out. You can snooze in a hammock. You can go for a swim. You can roast a marshmallow. You can have fabulous conversation. It's just a time to decompress and spend time with your church family. I'll be there. Ooh. So come see me. I'll be there too. <laughs> Uh, the highlight of our All Church Camp Out comes Saturday afternoon, normally 5 o'clock. Um, we have our baptism service out at the lake. Uh, we have a few different uh, church members who are taking that next step in their faith. If you are interested in all in doing that or, or even just interested in what your next steps of faith are, please go ahead and contact the office. We would love, love to join you in that. Yes, and... Uh, about a month ago, we celebrated the mamas. So next Sunday, we're going to celebrate the papas. We are going to have a great, wonderful barbecue right Yum after church. We're going to have hamburgers and hot dogs. We're going to celebrate the men in our lives. Um, we've got some good ones. You know, we celebrate the Heavenly Father. Now we're going to celebrate some earthly fathers. So at this time, we invite you to stand up and worship with us, mamas and papas and everybody else. Oh. I put a smile on my face. <laughs> um, we're going to be singing through the passion of Jesus right now. We're going to be declaring his kingdom in the here and now, and we'd love for you to join us. There was a moment when the lights went out, when death had claimed its victory. The king of love had given up his life The darkest day in history There on a cross they made for sinners For every curse is but a tone One final breath in it was finished, but not the end we could have known, for the earth began to shake, and the veil was torn, what sacrifice was made, as the heavens rose. All hail King Jesus, all hail the Lord of heaven and earth, all hail King Jesus, all hail the Savior of the world. on the move for 
in a dark, cold tomb, where our Lord was laid, one miraculous breath, and we're forever changed. He has redeemed us, and he has called us. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10 says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. We're going to sing about the goodness, the new identity that we have in Christ because of our redeeming Savior. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost when he brought me in, oh, his love for me, oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free. died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the sun sets free, always oh, free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for 
We belong to him. We are his and no one else's. Lord, remind us of whose we are. Thank you for calling us, for holding us in the palm of your hand, oh God. Help us walk as we're called. Help us remember. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am.
When I doubt it, Lord, remind me I'm wonderfully made. You're an artist and a potter. I'm the canvas and the clay. I know nothing has been wasted. No failure or mistake. You're an artist and a potter. I'm the canvas and the clay. You make all things work together for my future and for us in our failure. Thank you, Lord. You're not finished with me. You're not finished with me yet. You're not finished with me. You're not finished with me yet. You're not finished with me. You're not finished with me yet. You're not finished with me. You're not finished with me. When I doubt it, Lord, remind me I'm wonderfully made. You're an artist and a potter. I'm the canvas and the clay. I know nothing has been wasted. No failure or mistake. You're an artist and a potter. I'm the canvas and the clay. So friends, I don't know about you, has this week been one of those weeks where you have kind of went, you know, it is a good Friday, and you're one of the disciples, and you realize that Jesus has just died, and you do not know what next, the next day is going to look like. In fact, everything has come to naught in your eyes. But these songs have been a setup for us this morning. They move us into a place of reminding us when all hope is gone that God has something in mind for you, for us as a people, right? Father, and some of my friends and family members this morning, it has been one of those Good Friday weeks, if you will, we're standing and we have watched all the energy and effort we have put into maybe some time. For the disciples, it was three years of their life and they're watching Jesus die on a cross. And it seems as if everything that has been wrapped up, that it's gone. They all walk away. Yet, Father, you had something so far better in mind for us and for the world. So this morning, remind us of anticipating what's on the other side. We are the chosen people. As we have said yes to you, we are a royal priesthood given the charge to be your agents of love in the world. Not by our power, but by your power. The same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. We have that same power given to us. And so, Father, remind us of whatever we think is gone, hopeless, deserted. We're feeling maybe discouraged that as we are reminded by that last song we're the canvas and the clay we are the masterpiece in which you're still writing the story your story 
of redemption and restoration, not only in us, but Father, remind us that it comes through us as we live faithfully to you. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for your Holy Spirit's deposit in us as we have said yes to you. Oh, Father, that you would be honored by the way we walk and live. Father, yet some of us, we're discouraged because of something we've brought in with us. And so we open our hands right now figuratively or maybe we need to do it literally in order for us to get it into our hearts and our heads and our very souls. We open our hands and we present those, those people and those situations to you once again. And we say, oh Lord, would you take this? Would you take her or him? Would you restore this relationship? As we put our hope in you, we know you're the God of empty tombs. You're into restoration. And so, Father, we give to you whatever it is that's in our hands right now. Father, you are the artist. You are the great physician. You're the one who speaks peace to the water. You are the one who has control over all realms of this world and the next. And so we place our trust in you. And Father, for those in our midst who are trying to figure this out, Lord, would you speak, your, speak, through, speak to them through your Holy Spirit into them. Bring your hope bring your love, bring your grace, bring your peace. In the midst of our world that is in chaos, allow us to be the conduits, the reflection, the salt to the world of your kingdom, of your love, of what Jesus you have given so freely to us that we are to give to the world. We do this not by our own power, but only by the power of the living God within us, the Holy Spirit. To that we give you all praise, all glory, and all honor. In Jesus' powerful name, amen. You may be seated. Well, friends, now is our time to pause and reflect back on the week and to give back to God. Um, everything that we have comes from God. And when we leave this earth, it all goes back to him. So when we take this time, we just pause and reflect and say, God, you gave me this gift. I am trusting you to bless others through this gift. As it says in Deuteronomy 16, 17, every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord your God that he has given you. We have three different ways to give at Ipsy Free. We have our uh, collection boxes in the back, online at ipsyfree.org slash give, or by sending a check through the mail. Thank you so much for your faithful giving. And now can you grab your Bibles and as we learn about more about uh, God's holy love for us? Then he added, now go and learn the meaning of this scripture. I want you to show mercy, not offer sacrifices. For I have come to call, uh, for I've come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. This is God's word. You may be seated. 
Thank you, God, for the word you have given to us. How's everybody today? Who said awesome? That's great. That's great. Glad you're here this morning. Well, if you haven't heard already, we are a people who love God, love all people, and follow Jesus together. And you hear this, say this, say this probably week in and week out, multiple times in a service. You read it in many of our communications that we send out. But how does this look? What does this look like? How does a community, faith, community of faith live this out? Well, let me give you a few ways over the last couple of weeks. Most of them land in this week. And you can find these amongst your fellow believers here. We have a Jesus follower in our community who has been meeting with a friend faithfully, faithfully for weeks, months, who is in the midst of deconstructing their faith. Can I just tell you that this, this fellow follower sits with this person and listens to this person and prayerfully attends to her compassionately. You remember what we learned last week about the word compassion? Compassion is the conviction of Jesus in our hearts to do something with action. We step into love and we go, you know what? They can't do this alone. Now, this person is desirous and is praying that they, they rebuild their faith. But my guess, friends, as we consider loving God, loving all people, and following Jesus together, you have friends around you who are doing exactly the same thing. They had a faith at one time, and they're deconstructing their faith even as we speak, uh, knowingly or unknowingly, and they need a fellow follower to sit with them, to listen to them. They may not even need you to preach at them, if you know what I mean, but they need you to be their friend. Is that the mission that Jesus has called us to be about? That's, by the way, it's not rhetorical. Is it? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, this last week, es- Esterbrook School, right across the way, Ypsilanti Schools, we've adopted them and they've adopted us. We love the reciprocal relationships. This means for us that we are uh, friends of the students, the staff, and at times the activities which arise. Uh, and take place. So we try to treat them to lunch, the staff to lunches, because they're attempting to create an atmosphere in their school so kids can learn, and an atmosphere where parents can then bring their children and be encouraged about that environment. And uh, I get it. Some of us are parents, and we're trying to navigate uh, schools and teachers and all of that, Uh, and we have students, but we come alongside and become friends for all of those. A few weeks ago, we were able to provide a lunch for them, the staff, when, they, uh, when the opportunity arose. And this last week, I'm grateful to say that they had a field day, and we, uh, we kind of sent this out on our Facebook page. Some of these things happen spontaneously uh, on a sp- Facebook group, and somebody stepped in to go help out with field day. Can I tell you? Can I ask? And it's not rhetorical. I really want to hear you. Is this the mission that Jesus has called us to be about? Yeah, it's to love God. Love all people and follow him together into the world in which we live when we have the space and place to do that. So it may be you're interested in those spontaneous opportunities that we have to arise from time to time. And social media is a place where you go. If it's not, that's okay. And I would probably agree with you that it's okay not to be a part of it. But if it is, you need to be a part of the life and community group because that's where people People we post and other people in that group post from time to time opportunities to love all people in these ways. So that's just one of those places. And you may not know uh, or you may not heard, and if you didn't, you're not reading or seeing, I'll just be honest, that we have been partnering with Aiden Milan to distribute food in Ypsilanti uh, through the school and here. And uh, we're, we, we just want this to be an opportunity that we can be a see a felt need. I-